Good morning, everyone. It is another beautiful day. It is warm. It is overcast. And it is raining every once in a while. But you know what? We needed the rain. That's because everything around here is extremely dry right now. You wouldn't think so with all that snow that we had not that long ago. You'd think the things would be really moist. And you know what? Underneath the ground, it is still moist. But all of the debris on top of the ground, all the dead wood and the leaves have just dried up. And so what's happened is people are burning their debris and, yeah, They've had to go out on numerous calls, our local fire department that is, um, for brush fires. So yeah, the rain is a welcome one. And it is, like I said, it is, it's still warm here. But I have something here that I want to do. And I hope that you will want to join me and see what it is I'm concocting out in my kitchen. And I will talk to all of you in just a little while. What I am doing right now is, yeah, can you see the eggs on the stove? And no, I'm not boiling my eggs. Well, not technically. What I'm doing is I am pasteurizing my eggs because what I've decided to do was to make homemade mayonnaise. And homemade mayonnaise needs raw eggs. But we also hear so much about salmonella poisoning and foodborne illnesses not having cooked eggs and such, that I am going to attempt <laughs> to pasteurize my eggs. And what the instructions had said is that you need to have your eggs out, sitting out for about 30 minutes to bring them up to room temperature, that that was actually very important in the step of pasteurizing your eggs. Next thing it said to do is to fill up a saucepan with cold water, making sure there's at least a half an inch of water over the eggs and put it onto a medium heat. And it's important also that you have a, a quick reading thermometer so that you can watch your water temp. You want to bring that water temp up to 140 degrees and you want to leave it at 140 degrees for three minutes. And then you're just going to turn off your heat and you're going to put it under cold water, running water or put the eggs in some ice but it also stressed that do not allow your water temp to get over 141 degrees. So there isn't a whole lot of leeway because the whole purpose here is not to cook the eggs, but just to kill any bacteria that might be in the eggs. <laughs> so anyways, that's what I'm going to attempt to do. And hey, we'll see how this goes. Okay, so I got the eggs done and I wanted to show you the, the yolks. They came out, everything came out fine, but I had a real struggle to maintain that 140. It got up to like 142 and then I got it back down and then it wanted to like stay around 139 and it was just like, oh, I think that though once you do it a few times, it, it's just going to be really easy. You'll be able to figure it out, but I wanted to show you that. There is some, if you can see, let me walk up closer here. There is some little pieces of the white in there that is a little more probably cooked than what I should have had it. <laughs> but seeing that I'm not using those anyway, so it doesn't really matter, now does it? There's a couple reasons why I decided that I'm gonna start making my own mayonnaise, if this works out to be as easy as what um, I've heard it is. Who knows? One of them is that most of the mayonnaise that you buy on the shelf, even if you buy organic, is made with soy. And I want to cut out all soy. I also want to cut out all canola oil, which means that, yeah, there's a lot of restrictions now for me because those are the two products that I've gotten down my inflammation problems that seems to be the trigger for me. Anyways, you ought to do yourself a favor and do a little Google search on canola oil and how it came about and yeah, it's quite a read. Anyways, 
that's for another day. So what it says to do is we're going to place our pasteurized egg yolks and our dry mustard, which that's six egg yolks, and it calls for um, a half a teaspoon of dry mustard. The lemon juice is two tablespoons. And my salt is going to be a half a teaspoon. So then we're going to put it into our Vitamix here and select Veritable One and turn it on slowly, increasing all the way to high. And blend for approximately 10 seconds. Watch my clock. Now it says to reduce it to eight. And while it's running, I'm going to pour the oil into my vitamins. what happened. It says that if there is any oil remaining on the top, oh it just says to stir, I'm sorry, to stir it in. I gotta get my spoon here. And there is a little bit, but it is definitely mayonnaise. So that is quite interesting. There's probably about a quarter of a teaspoon of oil laying on the top. But yeah, okay, let's see what it tastes like. Wow, okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, it also says that just now put it into a container and refrigerate, and hey, make sure you use it within a month. And I am sure that you will. Anyways, I hope that this has helped somebody, and hey, it's really not that expensive. Oh, but I did forget to say, I chose to use avocado oil. Because everything that I was reading said that olive oil can leave too strong of a flavor for most people. That we love it in our salads, but not necessarily with uh, it being in our mayonnaise. Anyways, talk to you in just a little bit. For today's devotion, we will be reading Psalms 138, verses 1 to 3. I will praise you with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing praises to you. I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all your name. In the day when I cried out, you answered me and made me bold with strength in my soul. Today's passage tells us to sing praises to the Lord, to worship him, to be thankful, and enable us to be bold with strength in our soul. That directive might seem easy when life is going well. But when painful or difficult situations arise, this isn't always what we desire to do. So today, I thought we would examine another Bible character that I don't believe I've mentioned before, Daniel. This young man of royal blood was captured in Judah before Jerusalem was destroyed and taken away to Babylon. Yet Daniel resolves to be faithful to God and to his laws, and he manages to keep a heart of gratitude, all because of the choices that he made. In reading chapter 6 in the book of Daniel, I was struck by how easily he could have avoided being thrown into the lion's den. Because Daniel was Fully aware of this new decree that said no one could pray to any god but to the king. And Daniel could have easily decided to pray privately. After all, it was only going to be for 30 days until everything settled down. But 
That wasn't the kind of person he was. Verse 10 of the book of Daniel says, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since early days. You see, Daniel didn't panic, and he didn't start to bargain with God. Instead, he continued just as he had always done before. Daniel was not intimidated, even knowing that he would face persecution. You see, Daniel chose faithfulness over the favor of the king. He chose devotion over the decree of the king. And he chose bowing before God over bowing before his enemies. He chose commitment over compromise. And he chose love over life. The power of Daniel's life was his consistent devotion to the Lord. His strength came from God, whom Daniel wanted to please every day. When a crisis came, Daniel didn't change his daily practice. He simply stayed committed to his God. And with that, I want to remind you, life happens. Let's enjoy it. Believing in God doesn't mean that the lions aren't going to eat you. There have been many martyrs throughout all of history of God's dealing with men that have believed God and they died. The issue is that we accept God's will. If it is to live, it is to live. If it is to die, it is to die. But in either case, we're never defeated. God bless, and I will talk to you on Monday. Music